I'm Rich Tannis. And I'm Rod Tannis. We're the RC Twins. Yes, we are. If you like this video, please subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of our next video. Thanks again. Rodney will cut out all the half sections and line them up with the corresponding number on the print. Then he'll make more of them to go toward the smaller end of the airplane. We'll fill in all these areas in between each of these rib sections with corresponding thinner pieces. And glue them all together with contact cement until we've formed an entire half of the airplane. Then we build the opposite side and glue them together. Rodney contoured the entire shape with this surform plane, as well as remove any excess skin from his knuckles. Rodney made this hot wire jig to cut out the wing sections. It worked really great. And here's the transformer that we used. These wing ribs were fastened to the end of the foam to use as a guide for the wire. Next, we made the engine nacelles from these two inch thick discs. We glued them together, cut them into shape, and we added on the motor mount discs, and we epoxied and glassed them into place on the wing. Rod made control surfaces with wooden leading edges for the hinges and mounted them into place. We also used a half inch conduit spar. You can see here that the fuselage itself couldn't have been more than a thousand pounds. We made a driver for a drill and used the actual tubing as a drill to run through the fuselage. We mounted the water wings using the same drilling process. The wing was then glued and glassed to the fuselage permanently. Rod used a piece of the actual strut material as a guide. He marked the end of the wooden anchors for the strut. Then he fastened them and fit them into the actual steel spar. At that point, the anchor points could be machined into the end of the wing using this drill jig and a hole saw. The anchor points could then be epoxied in, as well as the strut itself. Next, Rod drilled the spars into the wings. You can see the drill driver on the end of this pole. Here's a really poor picture of the jig that we used to drill the spars into the end of the wing sections. Here's the cores that came out of each wing. They actually shrunk a little bit, making them easier to extract from the tubing. Here's some rough assembly photos just to get an idea of where we were going. Rod used drywall joint compound to smooth out the entire bottom. Then he used this palm sander to do all the contouring and glassed it when he was done. Next it was on to the finishing process. We used a little bit of Bondo and putty and a lot of primer. You can see I posed with the plane but I was young and needed the money. Rodney then added panel lines all over the ship. We made a video showing you how to add giant scale panel lines. You can go and see it by clicking the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen. Or visit our website at rctwins.com. We got these cowls from fiberglass specialties and modified them to add cowl flaps. Next we installed the motors and the electronic speed controls. 
Rod made this real easy by installing flexible conduit inside the wing sections so that you could simply run the wires right through to the center and down to the middle of the airplane. That's what that looks like. All ball linked together. Just in case you're wondering. The battery door was made from this fiberglass sheet. Alright, fire that mother up. Nice. Easy now.